guys, today we're going to talk about the best troops for each respective Space Marine chapter. If you are playing any one of these, I'm going to discuss in detail why and which troops choice is the best for you. And in some cases, if you need a troops choice at all. We'll start with our Zealous Brothers Black Templars. And uh, if you've seen my top three strong Black Templars list video, uh, we don't really need troops nowadays with Black Templars. They are not a necessity. However, the primary Crusader squad is probably the best choice you can go for if you really want one. They are quite different to your regular troops choice in the way or fashion that you're going to use them for. They're not for home objective duty like most troops choices, are rather for actual fighting and holding the line. And I really like that because I think that's how troops are ought, ought to be used. They're not supposed to be uh, some measly, uh, small, uh, insignificant thing somewhere in the back of the battlefield. They are supposed to be your front line soldiery. With a 5 plus invulnerable safe and baby transhuman from the Uphold the Honor of the Amber Oaths, they are very resilient for their points cost, which is 158 points for just 10 mo for 10 models, which uh, is about 16 points a model, even cheaper than the Assault Intercessors, and the Assault Intercessors are already extremely efficient point for point. And their biggest advantage is that you can actually run them as a huge 20-man monstrosity, getting even more efficiency from abilities, stratagems, litanies, and so on. So, like, if you put Transhuman on them, it still costs you 2 command points, but you put Transhuman on a 20-man squad instead of a 6-man squad. If you have 5 up Shrek on them, that 5 up Shrek goes on the entire 20-man blob, and so on. You can also run them with Sigismund Seal for extra 20 points, which I highly recommend, which would give you full rerolls to hit and wound against one opponent's unit for the entire game. And if you manage to select that unit well enough so that you actually end up fighting against them, those 20 points will turn into a mountain of efficiency for you. Continuing the line of unusual chapters, the Death Watch, I think for them the Proteus skill team is my favorite choice. The Death Watch are actually my army, my favorite army, the one I play most in tournaments and against other opponents. Uh, uh, and there's a reason for it, but um, we're not uh, going to talk about that today. Uh, however, the Proteus skill team is something I use on a regular basis. I have several of them in each of my lists. And here's why. They are an interesting case because the main power of Death Watch lies in their flexibility and customizations of the kill teams, which can be used for more versatile loadouts or more specialized ones. And I think that the specialized loadout is the better choice, which I usually do them full melee loadout. And the fact that I can give all melee weapons and storm shields to a big blob of OPSEC guys is the big selling point for me. Inversely, it means that they're not the best for home objective duty because you've already paid those points for the war gear because their basic cost is I think 27 points a model which is as you can see quite a bit more than say an assault intercessor at uh, 10 points more each uh, so you've already paid for that storm shield you've already paid for a, uh, for a gun or a melee weapon and you pretty much have to have them otherwise you're just wasting money points in this case and uh, that war gear would be sitting just idly in the deployment zone. What I started to do recently is the use the fact that the heavy weapons also don't cost much, and the, in the uh, Death Watch veterans squad you can actually, which is the same thing almost as the Proteus skill team, uh, you can actually run heavy weapons up to four for a five man or a ten man squad doesn't matter. So I have a squad of five missile launchers, uh, or it can be. Um, heavy bolters if you like and I put them on my back home objective and they plink away throughout the game usually people just ignore them because uh, there is a lot of other stuff to try to kill in my force and they do quite a lot of very reliable damage for me so yes even although the death watch are not in the best spot nowadays I think the produce kill team is the way to go if you want to have more melee support in your army
Next are the salamanders. All good uh, regular options that we have and I used to are still good here. Uh, but the tactical squad with the last cannon on the home objective actually makes sense with the salamanders. That one-off reroll to wound is very helpful for the last cannon because you're hitting on threes usually if you're stationary. And uh, rolling one or two to wound is very often something that often happens to the last cannon and sergeant can also have a kami melter in some cases when uh, something ends up close to your squad for just 90 points getting one good last cannon shot every turn is pretty neat especially considering that your home squad is unlikely to be overly productive anyway throughout the game it's just a uh, an additional thing that you can have for almost no cost for your Promethean Creed secondary, you need a strong unit on the mid board objective, so probably Terminators or Blade Guard. No troops choice isn't is really tough enough to have the stain power, so no reason to pay more points for heavy intercessors, for example, in this case. I do believe that with Salamanders you may just switch the um tactical squad for a say a unit of three eliminators with less fusels and they will cost 15 points less even uh, yes it's less wounds but it's also more be a better cover save so it's 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 a gimmick choice i'll be frank with you uh, i'm not sure that's the most efficient thing you can do if you like tactical marines and if you have them in your in your collection i'm just saying that they're not a bad choice that is all but i'm pretty sure there are more efficient ways to run salamanders than with tactical marines it's just the unfortunate reality of the current state of troops choices especially for chapters like this one now the Imperial Fist. If you're already committed to the questionable life choice of playing Imperial Fist, which is obviously a joke, I love Imperial Fists. They are a very cool chapter. It's just they are in a very tough spot and have been there for a while. Uh, they are paying for the sins of 8th edition for the entirety of the 9th edition. Uh, that's just how things are sometimes with Games Workshop. Uh, their problem is that their chapter tactic and super doctrine are in conflict with each other. That's, I think, their biggest issue. You want to have maximum bolter shot which are rapid fire and assault and you want to be in the tactical doctrine old game but old game but your super doctrine only works in devastator so um, if you have a lot of bolters you're not utilizing the devastator doctrine if you are if you have a lot of heavy guns to utilize the devastator doctrine buff you are not uh, using your bolter discipline the the exploding sixes to hit thing your chapter tactic and i think that's 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 a bad case of rules writing uh on the games workshop part they just i don't know didn't think it through probably uh it's it's almost as bad as their geomancy uh, psychic discipline which is probably the worst one out of all the supplements uh, and again there's so much cool stuff that you could do with them but unfortunately not not in this uh edition it means they have to choose which is more important for you uh the heavy guns or the rapid fire assault guns i personally like the mass bolter fire imperial fists more because it it's more thematical and it works in tandem with the chapter tactic uh even though probably if you do the math the the devastator version like the, with a lot of guns uh would probably in some cases be more potent uh but that's just my view of how imperial fists ought to be played and hence the recommendation of heavy intercessors because they have the best bolters out of them all uh, with strength five and the extra range uh, and you can lay a nice blanket of firepower with them now the ultramarines heavy intercessors can really benefit from the ultramarines chapter tactic because they're rubbish in combat and they would really appreciate being able to fall back and blast the opponent uh, right in the face with the bolters be it with minus one to hit but still uh, and being able to ignore heavy weapon penalty in tactical doctrine is good for the heavy bolter guy uh, in the squad who is now free. Ultramarines need a good tough unit on the home objective and the heavy intercessors are a good choice for that all the other good choices obviously are still good here the incursors the infiltrators assault intercessors as i mentioned here are universally a good choice there is no chapter that in assault intercessors are bad for and ultramarines are not an exception 
the Dark Angels. For Dark Angels, you are unlikely to be using troops at all because you have first and second company rules allowing you to have OPSEC on your Terminators and Bikers. And why would you need the uh, troops if you have OPSEC on those guys? Because Bikers give you speed, Terminators give you resilience. If they both have OPSEC, why bother? Only the riding hybrid Dark Angels justifies using troops. And in that, in that case, uh, I would probably run Infiltrators as the best choice. They give you a good level of versatility for this single, for that single troop choice you're likely to need. Uh, and that's tip strike denial to make your Terminators even harder to get close up to without actually being uh, in danger of a counter charge. So like if you're playing against something that has very good reliable deep striker deep striking it's actually useful to protect your terminators your assets with that uh deep strike deep strike denial and the guerrilla tactics redeploy is great concealed positions can sometimes be good to deploy slightly further up the board maybe to put someone on the objective that is uh currently not occupied by anyone so um may be useful and if you're playing mixed dark angels you are uh, likely already have speed firepower with the raven wing and durability melee with death wing so tactical flexibility is the only thing that's maybe lacking the raven guard is a very similar situation with them they don't need many troops and a single squad of infiltrators is just what they need you want most of your points to be in those uh fast durable units that you will send on their merry way towards the opponent's line using all the wonderful strats that you have which are currently the biggest strength of the raven guard or the infiltrator S stratagem and uh, the redeploy with the world trade so all that all these shenanigans is what you really are should be concentrated on uh, whereas the infiltrators as your troops choice would provide that level of cheap relatively cheap flexibility and you're likely going to already have eliminators in your list and they will be occupying your home objective pretty much all the time in which case infiltrators are your midfield tool whilst your fast and deadly squads are already killing the opponent and also all the redeployment shenanigans raven guard have will really benefit from the deep strike denial ability of infiltrators because where there are no enemy units you can fit yours but obviously that's only relevant against armies opponents who actually use deep striking now the iron hands for iron hands both infiltrators and assault intercessors are great iron hands are slow so having jump start in the objective is definitely a good bonus so the infiltrators are great not allowing enemy units to deep strike and charge your lines is very big because you don't have any fight last, fight first buffs, debuffs. So uh, you want to control that fighting. You don't want to be uh, surrounded and drowned in the attacks and the opponent's units uh, too fast. Otherwise, that can cripple your ability to bump those <laughs> Devastator Doctrine shots into them. As for the Assault Intercessors, they are just a very cheap and efficient way to put 10 primary wounds on an objective. And with the 6 subtract from the Iron Hands, they're even more durable. Again, because of infantry Eliminators, sorry, uh, it's unlikely that you'd actually need home objective holders. The Eliminators are just awesome with Iron Hands, rerolling the ones to hit, ignoring uh, penalty for moving and shooting with heavy weapons. So these guys are here for cheap board control and nothing else and you don't want to have more than two probably even one squad and lastly the three fighty chapters space wolves blood angels and white scars for all these three assault intercessors are absolutely the best troops choice in curses being a close second place for blood angels because you'd get the best bang for your buck with the melee synergies your chapter provides for a very low price as well white scars make them extremely fast with advance and charge and deadly in the assault doctor with chain swords becoming damage 2 and AP2. Uh, it's just something yet that you don't really expect from a troops choice. 21 attacks at strength 4, AP2, damage 2. That's a bit crazy, and that's what white scars can do to you. And they can also run like 9 or 10 inches on average uh, every turn, and they can also fall back and charge. So yes, assault intercessors are great, and uh, the more you have in your list, the better, because they're actually that efficient.
Now the Blood Angels, they do pretty much the same thing, but slightly differently. They give you plus one to advances and charges, so make the Assault and Successes in general faster. And their Chapter Tactic uh, also gives plus one to Wound on the Charge, helping the Strength 4 actually uh, be dangerous against Toughness 7 targets, even Toughness 8 if you are really desperate. So, uh, and you also in the Assault Doctrine get plus one attack, so your 21 attacks from the squad become 20. 26, uh, which is considerable again for a troops squad. Why I like incurses for Blood Angels as well is because they also have AP1 and you are essentially trading that extra attack of, of the chain sword for the flexibility of Phobos armor. And uh, I'm not sure where that efficiency lies. Obviously, you're going to pay extra five points as well. But I think that incurses are worth it for Blood Angels because you, uh, when all your stuff is there charging and fighting, you need something that can be fast and also potentially defend itself themselves in combat. And incursions are more tactically flexible than the assault intercessors, no doubt. Space wolves don't really boost their speed, uh, but give more punch with plus one to hit and heroic interventions are also helpful to protect the objectives. Because if you put an assault intercessors unit somewhere near the objective, there is no way your opponent can steal that from you without retaliation. And obviously one CP savage strike stratagem, which is awesome, uh, for plus one to wound can be helpful against high toughness targets. I must uh, admit that I don't really like the choices we have with Space Wolves currently. All the specialized troop choices, the Grey Hunters and the Blood Claws. I just don't feel like they are good enough for what we want from Space Wolves. Uh, we hardly need the assault intercessors and those guys are very very efficient so um, i'm just waiting for something primaris to pop up in the space wolves lines for the troops choices maybe then we will have a new conversation about that something like the primaris crusader squad for the black templars but with the space wolves flavor so let me know guys what you think about my choices here. If you have a better one, please share that in the comment section below. I'm really interested in that because I am not an expert in each particular one and I may be wrong at some things. So if you have an, a different opinion, please share that in the comment section below and I'll see you next time. Bye.